guys. Welcome to Story Camp. I'm Pastor Carrie. Uh, we are reading The Wind and the Willows, and this week we are on chapter four. Um, if you remember, we left Rat and Moly uh, last week, uh, chapter three, uh, lost out in the wild wood in the snow, um, and in their search for a safe place to spend the night, um, they just happened upon the doormat. Uh, that was lying outside of Mr. Badger's home. And so they had dug and scraped uh, to get to the door. And uh, when we left them last chapter, they had just begun banging and knocking on the door, ringing the doorbell to get Badger's attention. So here we are. Um, I'm actually in my living room or my dining room, uh, but um, we're in the dark because this uh, week's chapter uh, takes place deep inside um, uh, Mr. Badger's home, his tunnels underground, uh, where it's dark. Uh, so let's begin chapter four, Mr. Badger. There was a noise of a bolt pushed back and the door opened a few inches, enough to show a long snout and a pair of sleepy blinking eyes. <laughs> oh, Badger, cried the rat. Let us in, please. It's me, Rat, and my friend, Mole, and we've lost our way in the snow. What, Ratty, my dear little man, exclaimed the badger. Come along in, both of you, both of you at once. The two animals tumbled over each other in their eagerness to get inside and heard the door shut behind them with great joy and relief. Come into the kitchen. There's a first-rate fire there and supper and everything, said Badger. He shuffled on in front of them, carrying a lantern, and they followed. They followed through dark, long, tunnel-like passages until they found themselves in all the glow and warmth of a large, lit kitchen. The kindly badger set out cushions for them to sit on while they warmed themselves in front of the fire. When at last they were thoroughly toasted, the badger summoned them to the table where he had been busy setting out a lovely supper. While Mole and, Ak and Rat ate, Badger sat in the armchair at the head of the table and nodded gravely at intervals as the animals told them their story and he did not seem surprised or shocked at anything. And he never said, I told you so, or just what I always said, or remarked that they ought to have done so-and-so, or ought not to have done something else. The mole began to feel very kindly towards Badger. Now then, Badger continued, tell us the news from your part of the world. How's my old friend Toad doing? Oh, from bad to worse, said the rat gravely. Another smash up only last week and a bad one. You see, he will insist on driving himself and he's hopelessly incapable. He's been in the hospital three times, added the mole. And as for the fines he's had to pay, oh, it's just simply awful to think about. Badger went through a bit of hard thinking. Hmm. Now look here, he said at last. We, that is you and me and our friend the mole here, we'll have to take Toad seriously in hand. We'll stand no more of his nonsense whatsoever. We'll bring him back to reason. We'll make our friend be a sensible Toad. Now, that's enough of Toad. It's time we were all in bed, said the badger, getting up and fetching extra lanterns. Come along, you two. I'll show you your quarters and take your time tomorrow morning. Breakfast is at any hour you please. In accordance with the kindly badger's instructions, the two tired animals came down to breakfast very late the next morning and found a bright fire burning in the kitchen. Where's Mr. Badger? inquired the mole as he warmed the coffee pot before the fire. 
Rat well knew that Badger, having eaten a hearty breakfast, had retired to his study and set, settled himself in an armchair with his legs up on another chair and a red cotton handkerchief over his face and was being busy in the usual way at this time of the year for animals that take winter naps. Later that day, the front doorbell clanged loudly and the rat went to see who it might be. Presently, he returned in front of the otter who greeted both of them kindly. Thought I might find you here all right, said the otter cheerfully. They were all in a great state of alarm along the river bank when I arrived this morning. Rat never been home all night, nor mole either. Something dreadful must have happened, they said. And the snow had covered up all your tracks, of course. But I knew that when people were in any fix, they mostly went to Badger, or else Badger got to know of it somehow. So I came straight off here through the wild wood and the snow. Soon after Otter's arrival, Badger returned from his study and they all sat down to lunch together. The mole found himself placed next to Mr. Badger and as the other two were still deep in river talk from which nothing could divert them, he took the opportunity to tell Badger how comfortable and homelike it all felt to him. Once well underground, he said, you know exactly where you are. Nothing can happen to you and nothing can get at you. Things go on all the same overhead and you let them and don't bother about them. When you want to, up you go. And there the things are waiting for you. The badger simply beamed at him. That's exactly what I say, he replied. There's no peace, no tranquility except underground. And then if your ideas get larger and you want to expand, why? Simply dig and scrape and there you are. And on the other hand, if you feel your house is a bit too big, you stop up a hole or two and there you are again. When lunch is over, he continued, I'll take you all around this little place of mine. I can see you'll appreciate it. You understand what domestic architecture ought to be. After lunch, accordingly, when the other two had settled themselves into the chimney corner and had started a he heated argument on the subject of eels, <laughs> the badger lighted a lantern and asked the mole to follow him. After much exploring, they made their way back to the kitchen where they found the rat walking up and down, very restless. The underground atmosphere was oppressing him and getting on his nerves, and he seemed really to be afraid that the river would run away if he wasn't there to look after it. So he had his overcoat on. Come along, Mole, he said anxiously as soon as he caught sight of them. We must get off while it's daylight. Don't want to spend another night in the wild wood. You really needn't fret, Ratty, added the badger placidly. My passages run further than you think, and I've paths to the edge of the wood in several directions. The otter, knowing all the paths, took charge of the party as they trailed out and made swiftly for home, for firelight and the familiar things it played on, for the voice sounding cheerily outside their window of the river that they knew and trusted. All right, chapter four. Let's take a few minutes to think about what we've read before we head out. Uh, first off, let's think about the kingdom of God. We've talked about how uh, in this story, The Wind and the Willows, uh, we really see uh, what friendship is all about. We really see that uh, what friendship inside of the kingdom of God is supposed to like look like. We've talked about loyalty and faithfulness to our friends. We've talked about rescuing, helping out our friends, even when it's not easy for us, even when it's going to cost us something. Um, and uh, in this chapter, we see 
Um, another um, aspect of friendship, two things I want to point out, um, and they have to do with Badger. He came inside into Badger's home. Badger didn't say, hey, I told you so. Uh, instead, he just listened. He listened to their story. He nodded. He was kind. He was gracious. He just listened. That's such an important part of friendship, isn't it? To just be listened to, to be able to tell each other um, our stories um, and just have someone listen. It's such an important part of friendship in the kingdom of God. Uh, God is such a good listener to us, isn't he? Um, another uh, point I wanted to make, uh, again, with Badger, was when Badger asked Mo Mole and Rat uh, later on, when they were sitting by the fire warming up, he asked them about his friend Toad. And Molly and Ratty were honest. They told him that um, Toad was still being pretty naughty with his motor car. <laughs> um, in fact, that he'd um, had a bunch of smash-ups, that he'd ended up in the hospital, and that he'd been given lots of fines by the police officers. Uh, Badger didn't make fun of Toad. Um, he didn't say naughty things about Toad. He just said, okay, friends, uh, we're going to have to love Toad enough to tell him the truth um, because he wanted Toad uh, to be transformed. He wanted Toad to do better. Um, and so he was willing um, to have maybe a hard conversation with Toad to help Toad maybe see the truth um, accept the truth and live the truth. Uh, so those are important parts of friendship, listening and telling each other the truth, loving each other enough to tell each other the truth. All right, let's think about our homes. Let's think about the idea of our home. Um, Badger uh, certainly was generous with his home, wasn't he? He welcomed uh, Mole and Ratty right in, um, was eager to get them warmed up by the fire, eager to uh, set out some good food for them, eager to give them a place to rest and to sleep, uh, eager to listen, um, eager to hear their stories. And that's um, such a great example of what our home should be like too. Um, just ready to welcome folks in, uh, ready to offer a meal, ready to offer a place to sleep, um, ready to listen. Uh, our homes. Um, and nature. We've been talking about nature. Now this is a little bit different, isn't it? This time we're underground, inside the earth, in these tunnels that Badger has made uh, his home in. And um, we see that Ratty doesn't really like being underground. He misses the river. Uh, he's a river rat. But that Mole is actually quite comfortable. It's, um, I think, reminding him of his home. If you remember when we first met him in chapter one, he was in his home underground doing some spring cleaning. Um, so the earth, the earth, um, and uh, Badger and Mole seem to agree that it makes them feel very safe. Finally, um, transformation. And we've been using the book of Psalms as um, a way to receive God's transformative um, good news for us uh, as we've re read through um, the wind and the willows. And today I want to read for you from Psalm 62. Psalm 62, verse 1 and 2. Truly, my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. And um, I think today, uh, Badger and his home were a good example. Mole and Rat were pretty shaken. They were afraid. Uh, they were lost out in the wild wood. And uh, Badger opened the door of his home and welcomed them in. Uh, welcomed them into the safety uh, and the warmth and the comfort of his home underground. Um, and uh, I think that that's an example to us of uh, this passage um, where truly our souls find rest in God and Mole and Rat truly found rest uh, from the wild wood in Badger's home and with Badger. All right, that's all for now. Have a great week. Know that you're loved and that you're prayed for. Oh, and there's Kitty. Bye-bye. <laughs>